South African cricket administrators have had a lot to deal with behind the scenes. The retirement of senior players, the appointment of an interim team director for the Proteas, as well as the restructuring of the domestic game have been some of the issues on Cricket South Africa's agenda. To tell us more on the latest developments, we are joined by the CEO, Tabang Moriwa. Thank you so much for coming through, sir. First of all, let's start off with your term in office. You came in as a CEO July 2018. Just tell us how things have gone. Um, it's been an interesting journey thus far, uh, you know, getting uh, to just um, understand the landscape in terms of how the cricket business works. Um, I've always obviously been, um, you know, an administrator sitting at board level um, and um, getting involved operationally has been, um, you know, quite refreshing, so to speak. And uh, one appreciates now the fuller picture in terms of how uh, the business of cricket works. Um, I've always, you know, never had the need to be close to players and um, the operations, so to speak, and having to understand that, having to understand how the broadcasting space works as far as our business is concerned. Um, you know, the roles that's being played by our partners and um, the roles that our partners would like to see the organization play and players and how you make the affiliate members work together, you know, for the bigger picture of cricket in South Africa has been pretty interesting. So I've enjoyed it. Just take us through, through some of the success stories because transformation has certainly been one of those. Yeah, transformation is one. Um, I think, uh, you know, as a federation, we pride ourselves in terms of the strides that we've made uh, to, you know, change cricket the way we have. And this is not just obviously on the field of play. Uh, this is also, you know, as far as uh, the crowds that you see now in, in Stadia, as far as uh, cricket supporters are concerned, that has tremendously transformed and we could not, you know, ask for better support. Um, you know, we've launched our first ever domestic league now, which is called the Mzanti Super League. That's one of the, you know, achievements that um, we've had over the past years. Um, and then there's obviously individual, um, you know, achievements in terms of how um, some of our players have performed. You know, the likes of uh, the Rasif and Dusan and them. So, you know, there's, there has been quite a few achievements as far as Cricket South Africa is concerned, but we would like to achieve more. We still, we still have quite a lot to achieve that do, we've set out uh, for ourselves. Of course, Cricket South Africa has made a proposal to change the domestic game, something that Saka is not agreeing with. Why? Um, so, yes, we have made a proposal to, um, you know, change the domestic game, uh, to go back to the old system that was in place before the franchise system was concerned, which is going back to the provincial system. And um, the reason why we, we've done that is partly to save costs, to cut on costs, uh, partly to give uh, more professional opportunities to players um, and um, also to uh, give clear line of sight as far as playing opportunities are concerned. Club cricket is something that um, has been ignored for a very long time. So now, um, you know, going back to 12 uh, provinces, so to speak, um, helps us from a cricketing point of view to help club cricket players to have the clear line of sight. Um, you know, as far as professional cricket is concerned, we hardly ever pick from club cricket. We mostly pick, if not all the time, pick from school cricket. So now we want even the guys who are not able to play during the week and only playing on weekends to have an opportunity to play professional cricket. Because if that opportunity is there for you, then you can consider playing cricket professionally, you know, and stop um, working if you are working. So you want to have uh, the best of both worlds and have that good balance. Um, Saka hasn't been happy in a sense uh, that uh, they feel that the consultation needs to be more uh, and we need to go more in depth in terms of what uh, is it that we're trying to achieve when we're saying we want to save costs. Uh, what is it that we're saying uh, we want to achieve by saying we want to give more opportunities to players because if you look at the rough figures there will be um, about um, you know 60 to 70 players who probably uh, from a semi-professional point of view might lose employment but also you know there's over a hundred of players who you know will be turned from semi-professional to pro fully professionalized cricketers. We've run out of time very quickly on the soccer issue because they've threatened to take legal action against CSA. How do you reach common ground? 
We definitely will reach common ground uh, because, uh, as I said um, earlier, 90% of the decisions we've taken as Cricket South Africa is proposals that were made by SACA. So as far as decisions are concerned, these are decisions that uh, you know we as two parties were in agreement with. It's just one or two things where we're not really finding one another, but I'm pretty confident that very soon uh, we will find each other somewhere in the middle and we'll push this um, you know, idea forward in terms of how to better execute it between the two of us. Well, let's certainly hope that that will be the case because one thing that South African cricket cannot afford is to lose quality players. So thank you so much for coming through Definitely. to the studio. That was Cricket South Africa CEO Tabang Murewa in the studio. All right, for the last time from me, that's your sports news.